Lewis Van Taylor. Hello. You say you are doing well during this crazy COVID period? I am. Amazingly so. Uh, I was a little crazy last week, but that had nothing to do with music. So I made it through the week, and uh, I'm better today, focused, not crazy. You know, that typical male energy. I had a lot of male energy last week. And uh, What kind of male energy was that? Like, is, what do you, you think? Some what affair, you, affairs of the heart type of male energy. What, what do you think? All of that and above. Problems. Well, not male really. Problems. <laughs> you know, nothing like, you know, like I'm cohabitating with someone. Those, that's a whole set of problems. Uh, yes, good and, and you, bad. <laughs> and, and you know, you know, you know. I, I, the more I know, the more I know nothing. Okay. I know nothing. I take every day. With a grain of salt. <laughs> right. No, it was my male energy issues. Because, you know, when you play music, you've got to find a way to, like, feed that energy. You know, it's, it's such a high level of... It's very intent. sexual energy. Yes, it is. It's, it's sexual, sexual energy. energy. When you're playing music in front of a... It's just the biggest turn on ever. When you just play, you know, and so I've been doing a, a a regular gig, kind of a duo out in Long Beach at oh, a cool. restaurant. Oh, where? Where? Tell us. La Triava. La Triata. La Triata. La Triata. Sounds like and Italian to me. Good Italian food. I can it, go for that. It's kind of like that, what they call Tuscan Ooh. style, <laughs> where the food is a little heavier. Uh, they have a lot of meat choices besides pasta, but uh, it's a really nice restaurant. It's on the corner of Cedar and Third. Cedar and, and Third. Yeah, and of course, my friend, uh, Joe Zamberlin is a keyboardist. Cool. And uh, so we, you know, take care of our spacing issues and I wear my mask in between blowing because, you know, that's a whole issue for horn players, you know. So it's going out to the, towards the ocean, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have a great Nobody's time. Nobody's sitting downwind of you eating tortellini, hopefully. <laughs> yes, because we have attendees on either behind us or on the side. So we get all this space available to the, the street level. And it's kind of cool because people are, you know, it's like in the evening on a Friday night, people are walking their animals, dogs, jogging, whatever. And it's really kind of a fun, fun vibe. I dig it. Wow, it's quite a difference from touring with Cool and the Gang and singing with uh, as a playing and maybe even singing because you said you're going to start singing and, and, and dancing a little bit too and dancing with Pancho Sanchez and no, I didn't I didn't dance with Pancho too much the Ray Charles Orchestra and we didn't, we didn't, we didn't dance with did, I didn't dance with Ray and Patrice Russian and Cool and the Gang and the Gap Band and Tina Marie all <laughs> those millions of people that you played with all over the world how does it feel to take it down a, a, a couple of notches? Does it feel good? It's, it's weird. It's weird because I'm used to uh, being somewhere around the world, especially during August, and it's really strange to be home. Now, last year was a little slower for me as far as touring, but all the pre previous years, in August, I'm in Europe somewhere. Wow. So I'm used to like, you know, getting on that flight, getting off that flight, going through a big airport, getting to the hotel, just enough sleep to kind of revive myself. You missed and, that. And go and do the gig. But it's all that energy, you know, and, and it's not there. And it's so funny because this COVID thing is like another reality. It is. Yeah. 
Don't you feel like your schedule, at least for me, I think my schedule is so open. I'm not really bound to, you know, deadlines too much. I'm just kind of like free and easy. It's totally different now. Uh, it's I structure my day. Right. I, I begin with a cup of coffee. I end right. with a glass of wine and anything in between. Yeah. I structure it. I have to structure it because otherwise I'll just waft. I'll waft off right. into the atmosphere. I'll sleep. Right. But I have so many projects that I'm trying to get through before the money that I finally got from the government runs out. So I'm trying to set myself up so that when I get back into the rat race, but honestly, I wish I could just, don't you wish, are you happy? Are you okay home alone? Are you, are you, you, well, you I get out, I get out. You seem to be getting work. I get out. I and get you out. Like I have, you have a, a studio there, so you're probably working from home, maybe for. Some I am. Work. I am. I've gotten a few, uh, actually, a couple of recording uh, sessions, re recording requests for me to work my equipment, and uh, that's been fun. Uh, I've actually been out on a few actual sessions where we've adhered to social spacing. Uh, I was uh, involved in a session over the weekend with. Uh, a gentleman who I work with a lot, that's um, George Brown from Cool and the Gang. And uh, <clears throat> we're working on a project. And uh, so I go to his studio and we also make sure that we have social spacing. And uh, it's fun. It's doable. It's doable. The only time, I mean, we all kind of go through a depression, I think. I think we're all on a low grade depression, right? Yeah, now. it's a low grade depression because I don't know, like for yourself, I'm I'm grateful. I am totally grateful to be safe, totally grateful to have a home where I can be safe at, totally grateful to be away from, you know, things that could disturb my regular daily grind, you know. So I have a lot to be thankful for. Yes, I ha we we must constantly count our blessings Absolutely. every day because if you wake up like I do at 4 30 in the morning can't sleep turn on the news you would think it's the end of the world and and I I, I, I try to be positive and I try to say no this is the beginning of a new way of of I, I actually love uh, what this COVID has forced us to us musicians and artists to to come up with other ways to you know create uh, right. my friend who I'm having on next week and at WACP award-winning playwright Levy Simon you might have met him he uh, he did a uh, a reading on uh, zoom uh, of his film script and not that the film hasn't been made already, it has, but there are people doing whatever they can to stay relevant and to stay busy. If I don't stay busy, then I get really down. I'm like, oh God, my life is going by. And But uh, for somebody- you got the, you, You're right next to the ocean. Oh yeah. You just get out there and get your-, your... Do you surf? No, I don't. I, I've never, I, I was afraid I was going to, me, I would get like hit in the head with one of the surfboards. That's my luck. So I like watching surfers. I like hanging around with surfers and listening to them talk. But yes, it's a blessing to be down here by the ocean. Right, it's right. a blessing to have my two dogs that keep me very grounded in reality. Right, right. <laughs> Especially when they wake up at three o'clock in the morning with poo-poo problems. And it's like, okay, <laughs> no glamour here. <laughs> and, uh. But for somebody like you, who's like this, like when August comes around and the weather, you know, you feel like it's getting warm and, and you feel like, oh man, I should be on a plane now going to Europe and, and performing. Has, has it been, has the change been tough for you? Not really. I kind of take it in, what's the word, in perspective. Uh, this COVID thing is 
totally out of the box. Just totally out of the box. April, I had a tough time with it because I was consuming so much information. I love information. I love watching the news. But if you watch so much of it, it can be heavy. It's, you know? Well, these last months have been so heavy with George Floyd and then the yeah. marches. I marched. Did you march? I mean, it was deep. And then uh, with uh, the... I didn't, an uh, I didn't answer that. With John Lewis, that's okay. Sorry, sorry, I didn't. I marched for you, and and uh, it's well because I mean to go out there and march, and you know, are we supposed to be marching? That with, was you know, totally to watch. That was so crazy because this is a, a short little blurb on me. I came to Los Angeles during the first Watts riots, right? So I remember seeing wow. all that stuff. I grew up at a time where that I'm sure maybe a quarter of maybe a third of your listeners weren't born at this time but i was i saw all that stuff in the 60s you know so coming to la right on july 11th 1965 right on the second day of the riots that i can remember and to be a part of the second riots i was teaching at usc at the time oh wow I, yeah, and I remember we had just gone through our juries. Everybody had done their uh, final performances and what have you, and we had a chance to observe and uh, evaluate. So I get in my car and I go home. I, I was living in uh, North Hollywood, turn on the TV. All of a sudden, hell broke loose right around USC. I couldn't believe it. So I was I lived through that. So to go through this new experience, I probably wanted to like get involved, but I was I was a conscientious observer. Okay. Okay. I mean I you know I, I supported Yeah, I supported the people that had the right attitude about protesting what they need to protest. The other stuff, I was like in shock. I was like, oh my God. You know, like those Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday in particular, when it was going crazy near you in Santa Monica, it was like unreal. It was unreal to right. see people coming. All the streets are boarded up, you know. Right. People coming down. You could tell where people were marching by the helicopters. Right. And the minute I, I kept hearing the helicopter, I'm like, let me get out of here and go down. And I met them as they were walking by down on Pacific. And I just right. fell lockstep. By that, at that time, my back was really, really bad. Sorry. That first time I, and I was marching. I was limping along and trying to keep up with everybody because I felt like I needed to take part. And right. I forgot my mask. So I went down there without a mask. Like, I said, okay, I'm going to die for the cause. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Right, but right, it was right. so emotional, you know, I mean, it's just so, and there were people from all different ages and colors walking alongside me. Cops were posted, you know, everybody was being respectful because we have to be. But right. this, that man died and turned the world out. Right. People in all different countries were marching because they we we're all taking a look now at our histories, right. our racist histories. Right. England is going through reparations, paying actual reparations now because their whole system was built on slavery. You know, right. and nobody is without sin, <laughs> right. the original sin of slavery, right. in the world actually. I mean, it's, so. it's, it's an amazing thing because that incident has just kind of like catapulted um, conversation, action, doing over things that should have been dealt with years ago. But now it's like a an eye opening uh, experience. But not everybody goes along or agrees with this beautiful process of awakening. They always call it something else, you know, but I'm really glad to be on this planet at this time to go through this period. Me it's too. Grateful. I'm, I'm now, grateful. 
do you think now with Marvin Gaye in the six, six, that 70s writing what's going on and Stevie Wonder with all of his socially rele relevant tunes and Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young during the Vietnam protests and everything, where are, are our songwriters writing, where are our songs about this movement? Uh, the only song I've heard is Alicia Keys, thank, uh, uh, Good Work. Other uh, than the, that, I don't hear anybody writing anything. There's a young artist by the name there. of her. Oh, she right. She has a song right. called I Can't Breathe. Okay, okay. It's wonderful. That's a I powerful must, song. Powerful yeah. song. I'm a, I assume um, there are some, there's some material. I know uh, I've recorded some material in the last three months, which kind of is about this awakening process. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Not my project, but somebody else's project, and oh, cool. it, hopefully it'll be out soon. Oh, hopefully cool. it'll come out at the time where it's still relevant to what's going on right now. I know. I feel like now's the time to make the statement if we're going right. to make it through our art, through our music. I think so. Well, how do you stay grounded? I mean, I mean, you're you're a Buddhist, correct? You chant. I... Yes. Daily, does that, do you think, first of all, what spurred you into starting? Jenny, when did using, that happen for you? Why? And, and, and. Using, using Buddhism as an anchor to my life? Yes. Um, you know, that process had started some time ago. Before 1993, um, I knew a few people that uh, were involved in SGI, Soka Gakkai, and they sort of mildly hinted about, you know, the process. I really wasn't interested. In fact, that was, I was, I used to date a, a lady that was really involved in the process earlier, and she sort of hinted towards it. And I, I wasn't really, it didn't do anything for me, you know. Oh, yeah, what well, we got there? Oh, we got, well, we're sponsored today by Jose Cuervo, Blue Agave. Ooh. This is for you. I toast you, my friend, my mentor. Well, back at you. Is that on the rocks? Oh, yes, it is. Ah! <laughs> it's straight, man. Straight yeah. on the rocks. You bad I don't lady. Around. I don't like all that sweet crap. My uh, okay. some salt. Maybe. Said I want no fruit in my drink. No fruit, just give it to me out. No the fruit. Rock. Let me have it. Let me have it on the rocks. <laughs> but um, my uh, ex uh, turned me on to Buddhism officially in 1993. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, I've been uh, nurtured and mentored by the great Benny Maupin and uh, others and then been like my community so i in the uh beginning months of this uh covid a lot of us got together and would um, designate uh days to have uh, like uh group meetings within uh -huh. our process within my practice we have meetings anyway and so all we did was we adapted from a live venue to Zoom. So that's oh, okay. ongoing all the time. So we support each other all oh, the wow. time. And what is the philosophy, the general buzz about why we're going through this on Earth, I, on the planet? That's a good question. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why we're going through COVID. I mean, you guys talk about that, or uh, you... well, there sort of is, but there's you know, it's sort of, you know, there's there's things like karma. You talk about karma, about the certain things are in process. What men, man, women are going through as far as their cleansing process, you know. So we talk about things like that, but it's more about being focused, more about uh, rejecting negative energy. Uh, it's more about making sure that what we need to do 
as we chant, we make sure that our life is fulfilled and we try to give the utmost to our life and we chant for people that we might not agree with, uh, that we chant for their high life condition and we chant for the eventual eradication of this disease. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's better, it's, it's, it's a real better than filling your heart with hatred. <laughs> you um, know? Um, Which is none of that's there. In fact, when we have meetings, very rarely do I ever remember that there's, even there's an acknowledgement of the reality. There is that. You know, we do call it the way that it is. But at the same time, we're about inspiration, encouraging not only ourselves, but our 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 fellow members and through the introduction of this uh uh process which we call shakabuku we like to yeah shakabuku we like to encourage people to maybe investigate this process so that they may want to enrich their lives and have some support system so it's a very positive thing. It's positive every day. You know, like, you know, we're not, uh, everybody gets depressed. But that's when you are supposed to spend more time in that state of positive energy to make sure that you give yourself the necessary tools to have a good day. Well, it certainly shows in your personality, your smile, your warmth, your music, and good things are happening for you now. I mean, you haven't stopped. Some, you know, I mean, you, you kept working during this, in music, during this quarantine, you know, during the shutdown. And I'm happy for you. And I think that people like calling you for work because you're enjoyable to be around, you're funny. And, a little uh, bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And you like to eat out a lot. You like food. And so people like that, they're like, where are we going to eat tonight, <laughs> Louis? So I well, mean, you like to be around is what I'm saying. And you bring positive energy. And you're also extremely talented. So I got some, you know, I got some, I got some, uh, kind of cute too. So I mean, you know. I got some positive friends. There's some <laughs> talented, not only musicians, but there's some talented people out there that inspire me. Like I have my Is bad it? weeks. Who? Who inspires you? Who, uh, who, alive or past, first of all, inspired you to get into music? You mean inspires me today? And who inspires you today? Music. Okay, so t today. Like if you were to turn on your music right now, who would you want to be listening to? Diane Kane. Oh, well, gee, oh, it goes without saying. The CD's coming out soon, baby. You on it. You're on it. That's right. That's right. We're going to have that's to a, play something. That's a hot track. Well, I happen to have it. People right don't, you, you should play it. I happen to have it right here. They but need to hear your, this. Your beautiful flute playing was extraordinarily, and it's amazing because on the ballad, it was, it sounded different than what the second producer who did the house tune, he kind of, I think he cut up your, your work. All right, let me see if I can bring it up. Yeah, let's play the fast one. Okay. Let me see people, if can... People are going to be amazed at how talented you I'm are. Share the screen. Oh. <laughs> oh, darling, flattery will get you everywhere. Everywhere. All right, let's see. You really here. need it. This needs to be on KCRW. Hopefully, you know, uh, hopefully, Let's see if we can find this. I had it going on today. You need to let it, you need to let it fly, Diane. Let it fly. Let them all know. <laughs> let them all know how good you are. Oh, uh, well, I couldn't have done it without you and, uh, you know, everybody else that's that's yeah, thank you. To the great Robert Turner, and oh, yeah, you know, uh, great man, great player, Victor Victor Orlando, 
Was Victor on that project? Victor Orlando played uh, percussion. Okay. Hold on. Did you so? Did you make anything special this morning for breakfast? I know you're you love to get. No, I it. just I just had a strawberry smoothie. A, oh, are you are you fasting? You trying to fast a little bit? I'm going to I'm going to be doing a little cleansing, cleansing this week. This is cleansing week. Oh, cool! Very cool. You know, uh, it's very easy to sit home and eat and gain a lot of weight throughout this oh, whole man. process. But see, you have the beach and those dogs, see, so that's why you stay thin. That's right. Well, I try, you know. I mean, when I, then my back went out. That, um, that, uh, that screwed me up. Big Did time. you fix the back? Yes, the back is fixed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, here, why can't I find? Here. Let's hear this track. Hold on. America is waiting. <laughs> well, I want them to hear. I want them to hear you. So let me play a little bit of the of the. Uh, this is the ballad. You're on this. So folks can hear the difference. <laughs>
glitters through there. the main idea. The guys that did the uh, mix on this did a wonderful job. Those are my guys from uh, New York. Yeah, they did a wonderful job. My hat's off. My hat's off to them. They did a wonderful job of Those are my guys. Editing. I miss New York sometimes. But I love the vibe here, though. I love the vibe here. You can do the same thing. You can do it anywhere. I mean, we did that song. I was here, and they were there. They said, send the stems, and then we oh. remixed it. That's what you do. That's what we got to do. That's right. So, I mean, when you when this whole thing is over, are you ready to go on your, um, your national tour of one? How are we You're going gonna to have yourself, yourself, and a, and a, and a, and your probably your manager, right? I need my entourage. I need one stage, and I need some. Um, what I'm going to do is do projections. Josh Nelson has a really beautiful show, you know, and he. I didn't get the idea from him, but uh, he does it too. A couple of people are doing it. They uh, get up on the stage, or they rent a stage or a studio, and they use projections to enhance what right. they're singing or playing. What I'd like to do is use uh, natural... You pro you're going to do projections of real musicians up there, right? Well, intercut. <laughs> yeah, they're all going to be playing. They're all like the studio video that I took while we were shooting, right. while we were recording the, the, the CD. They're going to be up on that stage. Intercut between scenes of ocean and sky and nature and right. animals that's what i that's my that's my concept i hope you make that happen <laughs> i've been talking about this to you forever that's right <laughs> so hopefully this same time next year you'll be somewhere doing that on a <laughs> yes. tour yes yes on tour on tour for sure yeah. on tour for sure um, yeah. Well, also, what I wanted to uh, bring up was a little bit of uh, of you uh, playing in front of the masses. Okay. <laughs> Love that. In front of the masses. I had this all ready to go. That's all right. Now here you are. You're at. Uh, 
All right, I'm going to try this one. Let's see. Let's see if this one comes out. No, that's oh, not the one I want. I hear something. Yeah, this isn't the one that I wanted. This is at the Isle of Wight Fest. Boy, that's the big one. I hear it. Where's your engineer? Yeah, we have to hire one. Anybody out yeah. there? Interested? <laughs> let's let's put an ad out. Here we let's go. Let's put out a Facebook call that Diane King show needs a engineer slash producer. Because she is too talented to have to go through these minor glitches. Well, I, I you know, if you watch uh, a lot of these um Okay, here Are you ready to get down? Right, let's see if I can get this up on the screen. Can you all see that? Can you see that, Luke? Somebody scream! I can't see it. Jesus, where the freak? What happened? Hold on. You, we got to get you in the... Uh, what happened? We uh, got to get you back in our life. Man. Should I play some music in between this or, or what? Uh, well, why not? <laughs> I just... I, I was... I had all this set up, but you know, with the... Uh, with the uh, well, tell, tell your fan base. This is, but this is only the second show. This is only the second show. That's right. It's going to get better. It's true, it's true. Yeah, you know, little glitches. Trying to screen share here. All right, let's see. Got it? The Isle of Wight is in, uh, in England. Of kind of like, uh, I think you're right. It's kind of like Ireland, sort of, I think. I think. Now, is that a gig that you went, you know, every oh, year? No, you don't do those every year. You get them when you get them. It was, uh, I was a busy day. That was on a, okay, that's JT Taylor. You got to get out of there real quick. We'll have, you'll have legal Legal will contact you real quick. You can see him? Yeah, get it out of there. Get I know out you're of up there on the stage at one point. Yeah, but you got to get out of this. You got me on with the JT Taylor. You got to get out of there. He'll... Okay. Well, all right. Let's, his, let's... Lawyer, his lawyer will send you a, a, a message. Well, I'm sharing. It's out there on YouTube. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, what I was trying to capture. Do you happen to have? The Gerald Wilson um, studio cut of Detroit with me and Kamasi Washington uh, trading, uh, what they call fours? Wait. Jazz when you're trading choruses. You're on a video doing that? There's a video of uh, Gerald Wilson doing, I think it's called Before Motown. It's called Before Motown? I think it's called that. I'm not sure. But there's a... We recorded a, a record, a track called Detroit, and, and Here it is. Uh, Kamasi and I are playing on it. It was a studio re recording session, and we did the, it was at uh, Capitol Records. Uh, okay, let's see. I got Gerald in the studio before Motown. Yeah. Is that in the studio you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can. That's it. 
That was something else, boy. When I saw you over at that restaurant that got closed down because of the whale meat oh, over yeah. in Santa Monica. Okay, let's see if we can do this now. Okay, can you see that now? Yeah. And you're in this? Wow. Let it, let it play. Is Bobby Rodriguez. I got it on. I got it turned up all the way. Yeah, just let it play. Now, your history with Gerald Wilson goes back years. Yeah, I joined uh, Gerald Wilson in 1987. And... Did you basically play with him here in L.A., or did you tour with him, too? Gerald, back in those days, used to tour with this orchestra occasionally. We uh, performed a concert in Austria, which was amazing. And uh, one of the highlights of my experience with Gerald Wilson, we um, played the North Sea Jazz Festival. Uh, I think it was in 19... 90. And, uh, uh oh. Well, there's Kamasi. And there's you. Is that all improvised? None of that's written. Wow. All in the moment. Woo! Oh, yeah. That's jazz, baby. Man. Gerald Wilson is our, our and, and was and, st and still is my Big band daddy, man. He that was, was helpful. I was so fortunate. Such a great. Yeah, it was. I was very fortunate to play with him as many years as I did, over twenty years, and recorded uh, years? Oh. about forty, about five records with him. But you don't just do side. You're not just a side man. I mean, you play with great people. You know, Tina Marie. You played with Tina Marie. You went on tour with Tina Marie. You know why I found out? And I was with Tina Marie for about a year and a half, I think. And when I was I don't that? think I made two. That was uh, 2007, I believe. Either 2007, 2008. Probably 2008. And I'm on, a friend of mine that was the musical director told me I'm on her record, uh, Congo Square. Okay. I haven't heard the tracks that I played on, but I, I didn't know that. I can add that to my resume. Yes, you should, by all means. Thank you very much. And um, I, I won't say who you just recorded with. Who was that? Um, uh, the initials are TB. Correct. Can we say? Can nope. we say? Ah! Okay. Uh, but And then you recorded and did videos with Beyonce for Lemonade. I did. I was in that shot, if anybody saw that video, you know, when she's walking down the street and she's uh, destroying the windows of those cars with the bat or whatever she had in her hand. I'm oh, in front great. of her. Yeah, I'm in front of her playing my saxophone. <laughs> for some reason, they cut me out of the shot. I don't know. Oh. Yes, but you were still in it, so you could still put it on your resume, darling. And uh, Mary, Mary J. Blige, you did a... I, I recorded a track with her at the time. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was uh, two years ago, a couple of years ago, where she was being produced by uh, Teddy Riley. 
and I got a chance to uh, uh, record on a couple of tracks that were uh, arranged and conducted by the great um, Benjamin Wright. Oh, wow. Benjamin Wright is, you know who he is, right? Well, I mean, you're working with all these. Benjamin stars. Wright. Every now and then I get a call. Every now and then I get a call, and I'm I'm so grateful. He's he's such an amazing uh, uh, arranger. He's so amazing, and I'm so blessed to have worked with him. But you're starting to produce your own projects now too. You're not. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, because when stuff. I first met you, which was at Hal's, because I was yeah. looking, I was. Uh, you were I, looking for saxophone players. I was looking for a drummer. Uh, oh. I, for my last CD, All and right. I came to Hal's because I knew that Miles' nephew was playing there, and you happened to be there. Then I, and you were leading that whole. It wasn't you weren't playing originally. You were, you were doing your renditions of standard jazz. Doing standard. a lot of different stuff. But you also write and produce your own. Yeah, material. I got a couple of I had a couple of CDs. I'm so sorry, uh, uh, fan base, that I haven't put them out. But uh, I have. Please hurry. I have. I have one completed project, and then I have another one that um, we started recording on uh, about a year ago, and uh, we're going to finish up once I get my stimulus check. Uh, <laughs> you still haven't gotten that damn thing yet. No, I got the first one. I'm getting ready for the second one. Second one. Better get coming. that. Better get the act together so oh, I can get my project out. Probably December, right around Christmas. Well, whenever. Or maybe that's what he's planning to do right before November third. He's trying. He's he, he before he make, feels our election. He's gonna give us our stimulus checks. Well, <laughs> well, he's gonna make me go on my savings. I'm trying I not to go on my that. savings oh. to finish my project. But if I have to, <laughs> uh, I'm hoping to uh, release this project with. Um, I can say this: a very good friend of mine, Henry Franklin. Yes. Not only a talented uh, musician, composer, and band leader, Love but he's him. also apparently I didn't know this. He's a he's a businessman, and he's got this process where he's released project at the project. He's also released other well-known players around L.A., and they have uh, chosen his uh, process of uh, releasing their material. So uh, we're going to do that. He also chants Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo. Oh, really? You just found that out? You didn't know that? Well, I found this out some years ago. We had a chance to, uh, I invited him to, to uh, join me on a performance with a friend of mine, a great pianist in uh, Yerevan, Armenia. We went to Armenia uh, a few years ago and it was wow. myself. Where haven't you been? Let's just, let me just ask it my, that. It was myself, Henry Franklin, and the great, great Willie Jones on drums. And uh, we spent like four days in Armenia. And uh, it was wonderful. Wow. Played some music, some concert music. Well, Henry Franklin, you know, and he's just so brilliant. You know, he's right. just such a great guy, and he's still got it going on. And he still plays his ass off. Yeah. I mean, he's. You just did a project with him. You just did the live at the Gardenia. Yeah, we did it with him. with one of your with one of your. Uh, do you consider yourself a mentor to Robert or what? What do you? Oh God, no! Met me a mentor to Robert, please. Well, I bet you was mentoring him in another way. You know, like as far as his business. Well, I you I, know I I know I just I was bowled over when I found him and I. Decided that that's I gotta work with whatever that is, and he, you know, he's just special to me. He's special to me. So Robert, and actually through Henry Franklin, he invited me to play flute on a couple of cuts. I think they call it the Three More Sounds. Yep, Three it's More to, Sounds. It's a, yeah, From it's a the original to Gene, Gene Harris. Harris trio. Right, and so they recorded this live project at the gardenia room and so i played on a couple of selections on flute and it was that's okay so cool. that's so cool it's okay so hopefully we want, we want you to hear it we want i think i heard one or two of your originals over there uh at the in uh, culver city one right. night i think well music is coming out it's coming and what it's i did, and, and, and off the beaten track what i didn't 
what I didn't, somebody said, uh, Joe Goldberger said, hey, Lewis, not sure if you'll remember, we did a workshop together for Theater of Hearts years ago for oh, teaching yeah. correctional. Yes. Are you, he plays so, percussion. He does. Yes. I He's remember great. him. It just came, boy, we were at his school. I think it was, um, it was down the street from Centennial High School, and it was, uh, it was a challenging school, but I met him and um, with uh, security supervision, we put on a demonstration of music for the uh, student body over there. And it was nice to meet him. Nice man. My very pleasure. nice, very nice, very solid human being. Yeah, he's very good. He, he, very said, good he said Sheila Scott Wilkinson was and still is the director of at Theater of Hearts. Yes, she is. Are you I know Sheila. Sheila and I go way back. And also, she's another Nam Nyo Ho Renge Kyo. Oh, wow. And we go way back because back in the day, she would hire me. Actually, she used to hire uh, the great Bobby Matos. And, uh, Who's that? Who's Bobby Matos? Bobby Matos was a great uh, musician and uh, Latin jazz uh, impresario. He had a he had a band uh, in uh, L.A. for a long time. Uh huh. And uh, unfortunately, he passed. Uh, but um, Sheila's hired him to perform. Um, and we would go to uh, uh, low security or, me or medium security prisons. And we play for, uh, sometimes it would be mixed. Uh, but we went out there and, and played music for them. She was great, a great person. And so I've been with Sheila off and on for years. She, she uh, well, is, it it possible? Some, is there somebody out there that you haven't played with that you still want to play with either in the studio or touring? That you, what is it that you still? Sting. Okay. Is that good? You hear that, Sting? Yeah, I want to play with Sting. You hear that, baby? I was just listening to him last night. Actually, he yeah. did a, another um, rendition of message, message in a Bottle because he was I talking about how, yeah. you know, being locked up and quarantined and stuff. And we all got to keep Isn't that. Isn't that something? Amazing. Yeah. He, he is something else, you know, his Love song is beautiful. Do you, right. remember the, you remember the, the period of time when he had uh, oh. Bradford Marcellus and uh, Kenny Kirkland and uh, Omar Akeem? And Daryl Jones, you remember that band? What album was that? Are you kidding? Bring on the night. You remember that? Okay, no, no, I didn't. Oh, know that. Diane, you know that, that out. period of music. I got. I don't know how many out. records okay. she did. I'll that was that. so amazing with Bradford Marcellus. Not knowing that. That's right. <laughs> Where's Robert? Oh, he's sleeping. He worked all night. All right. Well, he's. So he's got a. He he's the only. He's spank, the only. He yeah, come he's the only one. Later. That's right. He has that. Keep coming, spank. Yeah, he has that privilege. Yeah. There uh, it is. He, he yep. He does uh, have that. That's yep. right. Yes, he does. Yeah, he knows what he's got to do when he wakes up. That's his first thing, first order of business: spanking. So you but, said there was a concert the other night. Not to change the subject. Because it gets me all excited when they talk about that stuff. Um, uh, there was a concert at World Stage the other night. It was a political uh, fundraiser. Did you go? Can you talk I about that? See, the thing about COVID sometimes, um, with, at least with me, sometimes if I, uh, I could be out of, I don't know. I don't want to say out of frame. Sometimes I kind of like uh, am not so. Now playing this gig that I'm doing now, I'm getting back to knowing that I got a schedule. I'm doing this. I got to be somewhere. I got to prepare. I got to get out of the house at a certain time. Get on the freeway. That's a whole nother thing, you know. Schedule. So you I knew missed about out it. On it knew though. about it. You didn't want to go. No, I I forgot about it. I saw it. And uh, it had really great people on there. Azar Lawrence was on there. John Beasley. Azar Lawrence. 
uh, the great, my mentor and, and friend, uh, Benny Maupin. He was um, your mentor? He was your mentor? Benny he Maupin? He still is. He still is. Benny, Benny sort of rescued me when I kind of got quasi-divorced, sort of. He kind of got me in 2005 and we had to get up at 6.30 in the morning and jog around the, the Rose Bowl and we were going to the gym eating healthy, eat dinners, you know, I mean, have breakfast. Sometimes we meet for dinners. Beautiful man. Just a, he's, he's, like just, he's, the, he's the, you know, you've heard that word sensei? Yeah. That's Benny Maupin. He was my sensei. Still is. Bad man. Yes, yes, yes. It's nice to be inspired. I'm fortunate I'm fortunate, I'm, this is the thing you didn't know in your preparation. I'm fortunate to have worked with some great people that have inspired me. One of which was, I worked with the great um, Bernard Eigner for three to four years. And we had the best guys in the band. I mean, you name it. Rafer Griffin. Oh, wow. Uh, Wayne love- Lindsay. I mean, really great players. And we worked throughout the Los Angeles area. And um, if you don't know who Bernard Eigner is, he wrote Everything Must Change. Right. And uh, I went with him for like three or four years. And he was like older than I, but he was really like a mentor. Then I worked with the great Carl Anderson for about three, four years. Do you know Carl Anderson? We, I've seen him around town, I think down at the World Carl Anderson was the best. We played everywhere. We we actually recorded a big band record. It was supposed to come out on a major label. Uh, this was under the direction of Kevin Tony. Great players. Phil Randlin was in the band. Charles Owens, you name it. Wow. Great players. And unfortunately, they didn't release it. It was some wonderful music. He was changing. Oh. But we played it. We played Spagatini's, played... At that time, the baked potato when it was in Pasadena in Los Angeles, we played everywhere. And uh, my biggest gig I ever worked with him, I worked with the Airmen of Note in Washington, D.C. with Carl Anderson. I got paid a whole lot of money. They treated me the creme of the creme. And it was amazing to be in Washington, D.C. with the Airmen of Note. That was such an amazing experience. Airmen of Note. I mean, that's the name. Note. That's a great experience. And then uh, I worked with uh, uh, Maxine Weldon for a long time when I was teaching at USC. I taught from USC from uh, 1987 to 1996. And during that time, I would do on the off season when school was over, we'd go to Europe, play at the Schweitzerhof in uh, Switzerland in Bern, and I was with the great Maxine Weldon, such a great experience. Worked a long time with the great uh, Spanky Wilson. Well, she is, I mean, okay, so working with vocalists, working with just musicians, any particular leaning? I, you know, I loved it all. When I was in it, I loved it. I, I got a chance to work with, um, uh, uh, can't remember his name. Uh, Jimmy Witherspoon. That was an amazing experience. Yeah. That was like, oh man, it was, it was great. You enjoy working with vocalists? Yeah, I work with vocalists most of my life. What do you say, what do you think makes a great vocalist in terms of the relationship with, with the band? What, what is it? What, do you ever turn, would you ever turn down work with somebody or have you ever turned down work with somebody and said, no, nah, I've got to go with that because what is it about a vocalist that well, makes you choose to? This is the way I look at this. Not just a name, but the way this they way I look at it. I, I didn't get that deep with it, really. I mean, it, it's, it was really about singer's work. Right? Right. Singers work. Singers work the the major rooms in town and to be fortunate to work with some really wonderful talent. 
I, I had a regular gig and it was fun. You know, that was a, you know, a regular job as working with Ray Charles in jazz festivals, you know, the way that they, Ray Charles are, look, was amazing and that, amazing. I, I joined him when I was 20. A million stories. I, I joined him when I was 25, you know, and it was, it was a great opportunity to uh, play with the genius but hearing with the vocals and with the instrumentals, it was just, it's the way singers connect. They always connect. There's a way that they can, they're really great singers, Maxim Weldon, Sp Spanky Wilson, uh, the way they connect, even working with the Cheatham's. I worked at the Cheatham's for a long time with Ricky Woodard and uh, Charlie Owens and um, uh, uh, Ernie Fields and, uh, uh, who played bass? He's going to get me Richard Reed on bass. I mean, it was just, wow. they sang, you know, she, Jeannie would sing, even though she's singing the blues, there's this way that they connect. Then when you would, you would singing and then you add the instrumentals to it. Oh man, yeah. it's over the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But Ray yeah. Charles, that was quite an experience. You must have a lot of stories from that. A that period in your life. I have a whole lot of stories. Every now and then, I share those experiences with some of my friends. Oh, let me not forget. <laughs> There's a man that I have a relationship even now, and I'm grateful. I love him to death. He's funny. Uh, he's a good man. He's been very good to me. Uh, he's a good man. The great Charles Wright. Charles Wright. Charles, you know who Charles Wright is? No, I don't. Express <laughs> yourself. Oh, okay, right, 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 right. Now he's getting a really big break with that commercial now. I mean, he's got, he's got, he's, people are looking him up now and probably, he's probably just a recent. Charles Wright <laughs> has been, that, that song, Express Yourself, it's like every well, year, he, every year there's on somebody's campaign. Amazing. His song was, did you see that movie, Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Smith? Yes. Okay, it's in that movie. You know, the fight scene between the two principals? Oh, right, right. They're yeah. fighting. Okay, that was, oh. Right. One song, right? All you need is one song to put oh, you in man. the car. He's a great songwriter, though. He's a really great and songwriter. He, and he was fun to work with? He still is. I still work with him. We talk. Even though that song is a song that he's always known for, he's a wonderful songwriter, a wonderful musician. He well, knows his craft. Songwriters can write for themselves, but they can write for other people too and make a hell of a lot of money. The good ones do. That's right. The good ones do. As I said with uh, Bernard Agner, he wrote Everything Must Change. And that song has been performed and recorded by many people. Beautiful song. Yeah. Louis Van Taylor. Yes, Diane. What is next for you now? What's what what's happening with you this week? What do okay, you have? This you week Friday uh, night you're gonna be down in Long Beach. Gonna be in Long Beach. It's I might be day. at another I may be at another location. It's being discussed now. We're just kind of working around the whole COVID nineteen thing. Right, right. You know, it's you know, I was dormant, I was staying uh, quarantined for months. But um, wearing my mask and being careful, I'm starting to get out there. I'm starting to get out there. There's a couple of things going on. I'm, I'm working on a um, um, new music for a soon-to-be-released film. Oh. And the film is about a very famous jazz musician that we all know, but it's a different... Um, slant maybe i can say that a different way of looking at it is it authentic is it is it true it's 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 you know sometimes once, it's, once we're able to say who it is then it's like oh yeah right but it's a wonderful experience and i'm involved in uh uh collaborating on the score with uh the great uh george brown from cool and the gang so it's been fun to record That's that been music. a very successful collaboration with for you yeah i now, seem to i seem to i'm lucky sometimes that way you know 
Well, for all of us out here who are who are trying to you know wrestle up gigs all the time, do you is it like 50-50 people calling you plus you're on the phone you know saying hey man what's up or do you have a manager or an agent? How do you go about? I know, have some creating, friends of mine that part. have. Now I I've had managers. Actually, I had a manager that got me into house. I did, but uh, then that relationship didn't last too long. It got kind of expensive. Every time I worked the gig, I had to fork over some money. That's ridiculous. No, you can't do that. Yeah, every time I worked the job, it's okay. Here's a check. Right. But um, that's not good, especially in town working these hundred oh, yeah. nights. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, you know the budget. What the budget is. Well, you but, tried um, it. He tried it. Yeah, he was he was he was good. He helped me get into some areas. Um, but you do you have know an- what it is. You know what it is. It's um, it's whatever energy that you prescribe to. Uh, if you're in touch in Buddhism, we talk about the mystic law. In Christianity, you're talking about being in touch with with uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, so you're saying that you 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 you're call you call this upon well you're you it's, have it's, to it's your energy through. it's your I mean, energy sort of a redundant question because you're probably very much in demand but there are times like well, I don't know there's a lot of, how do you keep rustling up this look, and it is, yeah it is your energy I'm an older guy now which is okay yeah I, I don't have a problem with nah, that you don't look a day over twenty five right there's I'm an older guy and there's some amazing players you know what keeps me uh, getting better because of the uh, amount of talent. There's new players that come in. I remember, do you remember this young player by the name of Zane Musa? Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Zane Musa and um, uh, Kamasi, they keep me, uh, uh, I, I don't know if young is the right term, but they keep me inspired to. To, to improve okay. what I'm doing and, and, and improve the way that I do it. I have a young friend of mine who was actually my student at uh, USC years ago, Ryan Cross. And yeah. Ryan is an amazing, not only a musician, but he's a business person. He is. And it's, it's, it's really inspiring. Did, to... you see, did you see the Sophie Tell thing last Yeah, week? it was wonderful. That was great. But Judith Hill, it was amazing. Judith but see, Hill, she's no joke. Hey, but you know, it's a stroke. Of, it's just, it's a, a stroke of genius to be able to ask your establishment, right? Get them to sponsor that, and then be able to broadcast on uh, KJAZ. And do it. All in needed that. Yeah. Well, we can all do that. You know, I want. I, and but he did it. He did it, and we can all do it. We, we can just do can't it. get down and out. We have to go out there and, you know, kind of excavate what what what's what we can do now during this. And that's what you can right. do. You can set up two cameras. Right, right. You know, he did it a nice, classy way. Yeah, yeah. And and later yeah, yeah. Uh, on the uh, after talk, I they didn't even really rehearse. I mean, some of the songs that they they do all the time, Sophie Tell, but he did an original tune and Judith. I heard it. It was great. Tune. And nobody rehearsed it. They just kind of jumped right in. That's the beauty of those musicians, you know. Yeah. It was Lyndon and Kenneth Crouch and Ryan. Spontaneous. But the, yeah. the beautiful thing about it is that when they did do that, it, it came at a time when we all need that kind <laughs> of, like, relief. Oh, God, yeah. Well, that's a special night there on Monday nights at Sofitel. That's a real special night. But I think he did that on a Thursday night, didn't he? He did it on a Thursday. I don't know why. Yeah. That's great. But so, so as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I've gone through today. the period of time of kind of like warning and keeping myself sequestered because of this, not knowing what it is. And hopefully that we thought it was going to be just a brief um, uh I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. We thought for a minute it was just not going to last as long as it has. Well, we know why it's lasting as long as it is, right? Yeah, because yes, of we do. Agent Orange in the White House. Who... Well, it's time. So now it's time to, you know, safely. I just feel like I'm <sighs> more engaged to get out there and be more a 
productive. Well, good. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Safely, wear your mask. Wear your mask. mask. God darn it. Advertise. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. Right? Who are these people that are like, I don't want to wear the mask? Oh, you're going to go into a, an operation in the hospital and tell the doctor, and I don't want you wearing a mask either. I'm not going to wear a mask. You're not going to wear it. I mean, what? What is this? It's like what, they, what do they call them? People they need call, something to rail against. You've heard this term, Karen. You've heard about the Karen. Yeah. You've heard that that term. I was just. I have so many friends named Karen. They're like, I. Oh, you know, there was, there's, there's so many examples that we see where people are resisting wearing a mask. They want to make a big deal about not wearing a mask, and all they need to do is just wear the mask. Protect well, because, themselves. Because we didn't have the guy at the top mandating that for the entire country. So they threw money at us. They said, we're paying you to stay home. We're going to take care of you. And by the way, you got to wear a mask or you're going to get a hundred dollar fine. If you, if you stopped in your car, like it's, if you have, didn't have a seatbelt on, you got to wear a mask. He didn't do that. It's almost like he wanted to keep the chaos. He loved it. Plus it was killing all the people that he hates. He hates brown people. He hates poor people. He hates poor white people, old people, the people at the border trying to come in, desperately trying to come in. You know, he hates all the people that he hates. He was like, oh, right. just let the, just let it, just we let need, it catch fire. We, we definitely need leadership on this, on this issue. And Democrats. Got to kill all the Democrats. I mean, it's just, so here we are again. They, we ran out of money. You know, the, we fell off the cliff last right. week. And you know the the virus is still, yeah, alive. Yeah, this is this is the time that we we don't need, we don't need partisan politics. It's really about one people, one love. And it's about finding a cure, and complying. Are you going to get a vaccine? We help others. When it comes out, are you going to get a vaccine? Yeah, I'll do it. Some people think it'll be kind of like. They're not sure whether or not it's the they're gonna, legit. They're going to put a little. And we'll put a little, put a little, put a little something GPS, in there. Yes. Put a little GPS well, in there. A, they're going to put a little transmitter in there, you know. <laughs> Boy, are they going to be in for a surprise with you. <laughs> they're going to put a little transmitter. You know, like, you know, you've seen on some of those sci-fi shows, they put a little transmitter in your skin. Under oh, your yeah. Skin, you know. They'll be like, a lot of people feel like this is a. Uh, I had sex again at 3 o'clock in the morning. A lot of people feel that like this is a conspiracy. Um, what kind of conspiracy could this be? A lot they of really, people. really literally like created a virus that's going to like keep everybody right. under their. That's what they think. They think it's a conspiracy of control. But if well, it's a conspiracy of control, especially <laughs> the people that say it's a conspiracy to make 45 look bad, I have to disagree with that because it's a global I mean, problem. It's always about him, you know. Right. It's but it's the global problem. <laughs> globally, I mean, people are trying to deal with this thing, and it's great. He's a domestic terrorist, okay? Right. He fits the description of a domestic terrorist. What is a domestic terrorist? Remember Timothy McVeigh? What did he do? He used violence against people, innocent people, and again, to, 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 to go up against the government. Trump thinks that he's not part of the government. He thinks he's going up against the government by destroying democracy. He's using laws and using our government against us. He's closing down the mail system right before the election. Oh, he had that he wanted to do this for a long time. If you don't if you have to do it right now, of course. Right. I mean, it, it's blatant terrorism. Right. And we can't do anything to stop them. Right. The Kennedys well, were taken out. The Martin Luther King, all these people who are trying to do good for people. This we guy. Gotta vote. We got to vote. We got to vote and hopefully. I feel like I've aged 50 years and three. We got to vote and hopefully the people that have some kind of common sense, whoever they are, make sure that there's enough polling places 
available. Did I tell you that uh, during one of the elections, I actually got involved in uh, the whole voting process? I uh, worked at a precinct and I got That's up. That's what I want to do this year. Yeah, I did that. And it's an amazing experience when you help with the whole election process. I want to do it in Kentucky. Oh. Okay. Because they're, they're wiping out all of the right. precincts. I mean, yeah. what can we do? What can we what do? Is they, I think they started out, it's either Kentucky or or uh, Georgia. One of the two, I think they started out with like 1,200 polling places, and now they reduced it to like under 500. And then the uh, the elect the the uh, the electric electorate uh, is 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 huge, and so they need more polling locations they but they're not doing anything right they're not doing anything we right. can call mcconnell if we want but they don't answer their they oh no if you're calling before 8 30 we're not open and if you're calling during business hours we're overwhelmed with calls and we can't take right. your call right now i mean he won't answer the phone oh no and they're i, I i'm doing a phone banking for biden you would be amazed when you do phone banking, the people we call, we're calling Arizona because it's a swing state. The people you talk to, we, I, I, you call and you say, hi, I'm Danny Kane. I'm calling from the Sierra Club. We're just trying to make sure you're going to, we're just trying to get a handle on it. Are you going to vote for Joe Biden in November? One guy said, well, I don't know. He doesn't like guns. So I got guns. And I said, look, are you down with somebody walking in a church or a schoolyard? with an AK-47 weapon of war, shooting it up because he had a bad day at school last week? No. Well, that's the kind of weapons that Joe Biden is going after. He's not coming after your guns. He's going after background checks. Nice. He goes, well, maybe I'll reconsider. Then nice. this other woman, this lady, she was like, well, is Joe Biden, is he? Hey, hey, hey. I know. Somebody's getting on the show. How dare they? <laughs> I was going to call Lance and have him do a surprise uh, surprise Zoom with us. But anyway, we got to get out and vote. We got to get involved in this pol political. And the Democrats have to stop being so GD night. Nice. That's right. Can you see me? And, yes, I can see you. Can you see me? Yeah. Can't can see you, but that's okay. I see you all the time. Can you see me? No. As long yeah. as you can see me, that's okay. Listen, I'm going to let you go because I know you're starting to get all the calls. The women are starting to call the, about that time of night. Oh, you're going to play us a little song? You know, and I didn't know that you play baritone sax, too. Like I'm good night. Good night, Lewis. Thank you so very Bye. much. Lewis Van Taylor, everybody. Let's give him a big Thank hand. Thank you. <laughs> Love you. Call me. Bye. Bye.